Let's now, I got force power mill power rule. Let's try that sentence again. The enable parallel DML hint. This is the question that came in. I saw a new hint in the documentation, enable parallel DML. Can we use this instead, instead of the old mechanism of having to set it for the entire session? If you've not seen Parallel DML before, up until I think release 18C, if you wanted to actually do DML, and when we say DML, although DML officially includes select, the DML in this context, we're really talking about insert, update, delete. If you want to do those in parallel, you had to enable a session flag. You would do alter session enable parallel DML, and then you are able to do it. This is a new hint that's come in the documentation that suggests you might not need to. Let's explore. So the question is, can you use this hint? Let me put on my diplomatic hat and say yes and no. Yes, you can use the hint. No, you might not want to use it. And I thought we'd explore why I'm giving such a uh, vague answer. To set the scene, what we're going to do is we're going to have a table called stage, which is our staging area that's going to be used to load data into something. And we have a table called T, which is a very simple copy of stage. We're going to simply go from stage into T. They're both just copies of all objects, which obviously is not a huge view. It's about 80,000 rows, I think. But what we're going to do is assume it's large and therefore we want to enact some parallel operations to make the whole process more efficient. This is what we've had to do in the past. We will do alter session, enable parallel DML to let the database know that inside this session now, we're going to allow parallel insert, update, or delete. You don't need this for a select statement. Let's do an explain plan for this is the kind of things we would do. If we're doing a big bulk load of millions or billions of rows, we would typically do a direct mode insert, which means insert append. And we would say, I wanted to do it in parallel to leverage all the power of the number of CPUs our server or our cloud instance might have. This is what the explain plan looks like. And you start to see these parallel kind of operations in the execution plan. Lots of things starting with PX and hybrids and round robins, etc. You can see that it doesn't look like your normal execution plan. The key thing is there, it actually gives you some feedback as to how much parallelism we're going to use. It says, I used a computed degree of parallelism of two. That's probably fair enough. I'm running this on a laptop, so it's probably looked at my CPUs and gone, hmm, you don't have a whole lot of cores floating around there, so I've computed two. Keep that in mind. Let's continue on. Let's explore the use of this hint now. So we're not going to have the session flag set. We'll turn off parallel DML for this session. So now we're just a normal session. Any kind of attempt to do parallel DML would normally simply be ignored. But this is the new hint, if you haven't seen it before. There wasn't much fanfare made about it at all. I can do explain plan four, insert, and there's this hint, enable parallel DML. So rather than being at the entire session level, it's just for the scope of this statement, a little bit more granular control. And as we can see that explain plan says, yep, I'm gonna do the same thing. It looks exactly the same as if I was doing alter session enable parallel DML. The computer degree was two, and you can see those kind of things in the execution plan, PX coordinator, parallel combined with parent, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So far, so good, it's looking pretty good. Let's actually run it now. Just because the execution plan says it's going to do parallel DML, I'm, I'm a natural cynic. I never believe it until I actually see proof on the box. So I'm actually going to run this now, which I've done. It's loaded up 75,000 rows. If it has genuinely done a parallel operation, it will have locked that entire table and prohibited further operations. If I try to do it again, I get the expected error message. It says, I've made a direct mode modification to this table. You have to commit or roll back before you can do anything else. So this error gives me confidence. It says the first one was indeed done as a direct mode insert in parallel. So I'm pleased with that. We'll commit that rows, commit that away. Let's flush out the shared pool. So there's no evidence that SQL have ever been run. Here's where I, the, the yes and no comes into it. Let's now run those same commands again. I've put a, a special hint in here called look for me, just so it's actually easy to find this SQL statement in the shared pool later. I do a parallel DML, enable parallel DML. 
insert append, and I commit those 75,000 rows. Worked fine. I run it again. So I might be getting from a different table, some other source, etc. In we go. I've run it three times. So far, everything's looking fine. We're doing direct mode insert as we've proved before. It's all running. We're committing. That's fine. Let's have a look at VLOL SQL. I would suspect it's probably a bug, but it's certainly anomalous behavior. Even though it was an identical statement every single time, it appears that every time you use the enable parallel DML hint, you get a brand new child version of your cursor. So you can see the SQL ID is unchanged. I ran it three times and I got three children. Every single time I get a brand new child. This is probably not a drama for you. And I say probably because how often do you run parallel operations? It's unlikely that you would take a statement like this and run it a thousand times because high version counts for a single cursor can cause dramas in your shared pool. So yes, it's creating a new child. I don't think it's by intention. I think it actually is a bug. But even so, it's something you should be aware of. You don't see this if you just do alter session enable parallel DML. You only see it with the enable parallel DML hint. But as I said, unless you're planning on running that same statement tens, twenties, thousands of times, it's probably not a drama, but you need to be aware that you are going to get those child versions for every single execution. Let's go back to the normal situation where we just enable parallel DML. This time I'm going to do it with no hint. I've simply said, I'm not doing a hint. I've said, turn on parallel DML and just do an insert append. This is just a bit of extra information that I think is going to be useful while you're doing parallel DML. Notice that it's not enough if the tables aren't explicitly marked as parallel just to say enable parallel DML at the session level and let the database do it. It won't do it by default. If the tables themselves have been marked with a degree of parallelism, then yes. But if they're not, just simply doing a insert append won't activate parallel DML, even though you've said it's possible at session level. I actually have to have the parallel hint in there. Once again, I'm about that parallel computer parallelism of two. So that's just a thing to remember. If when you turn on parallel DML at the session level, if your tables explicitly aren't marked as parallel, you'll still need the parallel hint in there. One thing you can do to bypass that is say, I want to force parallel DML at the session level, not just enable it. This is force it, which means whenever I see DML, I want to force that parallel DML. This is the kind of behavior you'll see if you're using some of the higher performing services in the autonomous database. If you're using the medium or high services, we explicitly force parallel DML for this reason, to get you access to a greater slice of the server pie. I do insert exactly append parallel. I've got force DML. The reason I wanted to put this example in there is I get parallelism of two, just like before. I did insert append parallel parallelism of two. Let's try now, I've taken out the parallel hint and said, I just want to do an insert append. But remember, force parallel DML is activated for this session. Look what I get in terms of parallel degree. If I don't have the parallel hint, I'm using a different parallel computation path. You've probably seen there's a numerous number of parameters in your init.org file that are prefixed with parallel in terms of the max number of servers, min servers, what kind of automatic optimizations we do, what kind of ad adaptions we make based on the CPU count, et cetera. So we're manipulating a slightly different execution path there. So if you don't have the parallel hint and you have forced parallel DML on, you actually get a parallel degree of 12, which actually is, I think, the CPU count on this laptop. It's two cores, I think, or two by six, uh, six cores hyperthreaded. So it thinks we got 12 cores. So it's pretty much gonna grab them all if it can. So that's just a thing to be aware of, is there are these subtle differences when you start manipulating parallel DML at the session level and you mix and match that with parallel hints. I just want to throw that in at the end there because you might get some interesting surprises. So hopefully that explains the yes and no, which is it's probably fine in most cases to not bother with flicking your session into parallel DML mode and just using the hint because the likelihood of you running the same SQL thousands of times, I would imagine is pretty low. If you are, then maybe that hint is not for you because you are going to start racking up those child curses. But the other caveat there is that last demo I gave, which is force parallel DML might give you a lot more parallel slaves than you think if you're just letting the parallel decision making go to the database itself.
counterintuitively, if you add the parallel hint, then yes, we actually may dial back the number of CPUs that actually get involved. So just be aware, as always, look at your execution plan because it's going to tell you what the computed degree of parallelism is. <laughs>